Many QED processes involve one or several external photon lines, for instance, uh, when you have an electron uh, annihilating with a positron into two photons, or in Compton scattering where a photon uh, interact with an electron and produce another photon and electron. We know that for external lines, we don't need to account for propagators. That's one of the Feynman rules. However, we still need to account for the spin uh, of the particles when the spin is not zero. So for spin one half fermions, uh, this is encoded into the U and V spinners we have discussed earlier. For spin one bosons, like the photon or heavy uh, spin one vectors, um, this involves polarizations, vectors which also we have discussed earlier in the case of electromagnetism in particular. So when the uh, particle, spin one particle is massive, uh, we have three uh, possible polarizations. And we usually distinguish between uh, transversal polarizations, um, which are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of uh, the particle, and the longitudinal uh, polarization, which is parallel to it. And then we saw that in the case of a massless particle, only the transversal polarizations uh, are physical uh, due to the gauge invariance uh, we have uh, of the Maxwell-Lagrangian, uh, which is only here when the mass is zero. So let's consider, for instance, a collision of two electrons leading to the production of a photon. The external photon carries um, polarization, which will enter into the amplitude. Here I have written the amplitude for this process um, as a product of uh, the polarization for the external photon times uh, everything else which has to carry a Lorentz index uh, in order to contract uh, the one from the polarization vector. Apologies for the notation and its ambiguity using the same letter for the amplitude and its subpart once we have factorized the polarization vector, um, but that's standard in most of uh, QFT books. We saw in the case of a massless photon that thanks to gauge invariance, we could add um, to the polarization vector a component parallel to the four momentum without changing the physics. And what we mean by uh, doesn't change the physics is that physical quantities like the amplitude m uh, are unchanged uh, when we do such uh, gauge transformation leading to uh, this change of polarization vectors. Beta is arbitrary, so this must be zero, and that gives us a word identity. So what this means is that if we have a process with an external photon, and we replace in the expression of the amplitude the polarization vector for the external photon by the momentum of the photon, then we should get zero. That's called the word identity. And that generalizes to processes with more than one external photon. The word identity is often useful um, in calculations with external photons because that can be used to set some terms to zero. It can also be used to check that your final amplitude uh, is correct in particular um, you can change the uh, polarization by the momenta, and you should verify that this is indeed zero. And note finally that the word identity uh, is a consequence of gauge invariance, and therefore it only applies uh, for uh, massless particles.